Monstera Karstenianum needs well-draining soil, bright indirect light and temperatures between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which equals to between 18 and 27 degrees Celsius. You should fertilize Monstera Karstenianum every two weeks in spring and summer and then you revert back to once a month in autumn and winter. Welcome everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm reporting live here from Plantophiles headquarters. We're going to talk about Monstera Karstenianum, also known as Monstera Peru. And if you ask me, I would say uh, this plant will be reclassified uh, for sure. It uh, is changing names and also it looks really, really old. Uh, it is uh, currently classified as Monstera but it looks just so different to all the other monsteras. It has very thick leaves, they are really solid, it has a great uh, texture, it looks like dragon scale. Man, I have never seen a dragon, but I, I guess dragon scale would look like that. It, the texture is almost, no it is not almost, it is 3D, so uh, you see the texture coming off uh, the leaf, like it's really three-dimensional uh, how these uh, leaves look like. Monstera carstenianum is also a um, vining climbing plant so usually the leaves get bigger as the plant climbs and this is also the case for Monstera carstenianum. You can also let it uh, trail but then you will not be blessed with really big and beautiful leaves. Today we're going to cover the care for Monstera carstenianum and I'm just going to tell you everything about how I care for this plant. Let's start with soil. In terms of soil, Monstera carstenianum prefers well-draining soil. This is uh, no surprise here. It's a Monstera plant after all. Um, Monstera plants are aeroids, so that means they are growing on other plants and also surfaces. Uh, therefore, their roots need a lot of air and oxygen. Well, air and oxygen is the same, obviously, but they need a lot of air. So um, you use well-draining soil, um, you can use a peat moss, like 100% peat moss is fine, but usually what you use for these kind of plants is a aeroid mix. So aeroid mix usually contain charcoal, peat moss, as well as uh, orchid bark and um, perlite and sometimes pumice and also sometimes a little bit of horticultural sand, you can do a great mix. Uh, you need to uh, check if it's working for you or not. Uh, if you are in a very humid um, environment, you make it a little bit more um, airy. If you are in an environment that is really hot and dry, you make sure that it is uh, less airy and therefore holds moisture better. Um, usually the best thing you can do for Philodendron and Monstera is a soil mix where water drains right through it, but that can still hold a little bit of moisture because you don't want to um, these plants to dry out completely. So use a well-draining aroid mix and um, plant care is going to be really easy with this plant. In terms of light, Monstera carstenianum prefers bright indirect light. This is light that is not falling directly on the leaves. Usually you get this in an eastern or western facing window. This doesn't mean that you can't use a northern or southern facing window direction, but usually eastern and western is best. Uh, I prefer a eastern facing window because this is where the sun goes up. Then you have even direct light in the morning like three to four hours. This is perfectly fine because the sun is not that strong at that time and um, yeah you uh, make sure that it gets uh, sufficient light. In terms of placement don't put um, your plant directly uh, next to the window because this way um, there are um, a lot of temperature extremes there. In summer it gets extremely hot and in winter there are cold drafts and it might get too cold. Just put it a couple of inches away but not too far away from a window because uh, the light is falling off uh, quickly and a bright indirect light is quite intense light and uh, it might fall off too much if you go too far away from a window. So this uh, about light, you can certainly also use grow lights. I'm a big fan of grow lights. I'm living in a country where there isn't that much light. So I'm using grow lights in winter and also in summer. Take the money and invest in a good uh, grow light. Usually the ones for 20, 30 bucks, uh, they are not really uh, strong. They have just a couple of uh, watts and it's not enough in terms of looks. Um, looks is just a measurement of uh, 
light that the human eye can see, but uh, what if you're getting serious, you're measuring FC, which is foot candles, and uh, these uh, plants need quite some uh, foot candles to be happy. But enough about light, uh, let's move on to watering. If you have the right soil, there's not much you can do wrong here because uh, you're gonna use well-draining soil. I water my Monstera Karstenianum about once a week. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm using my index finger. I stick it into uh, the soil. And if the soil is really dry, like if there's no soil sticking on my finger, it's time to water. Actually, it's already too late to water because usually what you try to do is um, you water once it's still like slightly humid. Um, this is the perfect time for watering and you stick your index finger about two to three inches. So five to 7.5 uh, centimeters into the soil uh, to take a correct finger measurement for this matter. Yeah, so much about watering. Um, well, water is the best. Uh, obviously, the best water almost uh, that you can use is rainwater, but not all of us uh, have a, a um, source uh, for rainwater. So what I'm using is just regular tap water. I let it sit uh, 24 to 48 hours because this way all the bad chlorines and all the bad stuff uh, hopefully evaporates and then it's perfect for your Monstera Karstenianum. You can also use reverse osmosis water or distilled water. You just need to make sure or you have to realize that this kind of water has almost um, no minerals and nutrients and um, you need to make sure to add a sufficient fertilizer then. But that um, kind of water would be best in terms of having the least pollutants uh, in it. Let's move on to temperature. Well, temperature, there's um, no surprises here. It's a tropical plant growing in forests, in tropical forests, so um, ideal temperatures are 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which equals to 80, between 18 and 27 degrees Celsius. This um, temperature is sufficient. Make sure that you're not uh, hitting the extremes, so don't go much above 80 degrees Fahrenheit and also make sure that you have at least 65 degrees Celsius. Once you get below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, this is where you need to be careful because the growth of the plant can stunt and it can stop growing and even die if there's not enough heat. Humidity, Monstera carstenianum is a humidity loving plant. This doesn't mean it can't um, live or grow in uh, low uh, humidity situations, but it thrives in high humidity. I make sure that all my Monstera plants get 60% or even more um, humidity because that's where they start growing vigorously. That's where you um, start to see the air roots. Um, also Monstera carcinianum has air roots that they're growing like uh, crazy and you get bigger and bigger leaves because your plant can support them. And it's easier for more, your Monstera carcinianum to get hold um, on a support. Um, usually moss poles are great. You can even take a wooden plank or any um, trellis uh, will work great for your Monstera Castanianum to grow upwards. So high humidity is king. You um, can go up to almost 100%, but this is not needed. And as I said in the beginning, even if you have 40 or 50%, it will do uh, just fine, but it could do better. Propagation. In terms of propagation, Monstera Castanianum propagates as most, uh, as all other Monstera plants. You take a um, cutting, and uh, what you need to do is when you take a cutting, make sure that it has at least one node. If you have two or three, it's better because if then um, the cutting fails, you have two other nodes that could uh, develop. Make sure to have at least one node because just a leaf alone will never propagate uh, with a Monstera plant. And it's the same for this one here. Leaves are optional, but um, I highly recommend you to have uh, one to three leaves on the cutting because this way your cutting will develop much faster into a um, new plant. The best uh, time to propagate um, Monstera carcinianum is spring and summer. This is the main growing season and you will have the best success there, but you can also do it in autumn and winter. It's no problem, it will just take longer. When you propagate, you have multiple options. You can either put the cutting into water, you can put it directly into the soil, or you can put it into uh, sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is my preferred method. Plants develop roots really, really fast in sphagnum uh, moss. You just need to make sure that it's uh, evenly moist 
not soaking wet and also not dry and you will have, I guarantee you, you will have great success with sphagnum moss. I also put my cuttings into a plastic container because this way you have really high humidity, almost 100%, it's in the high 90s. And also you don't need to uh, water that much and just leave it in there. Uh, you forget about it and a couple of weeks later you have uh, roots and a new plant almost. The only thing I'm doing is because these plastic containers are completely enclosed, I uh, lift uh, the lid like every couple of days to um, allow for new air to come in. Uh, that's totally sufficient. There's not much else uh, you need to do there. But yeah, you can also uh, take a cutting and put it directly into the soil. It will also work, but then you don't see the roots. An easy method is also propagating plants in water. The great thing is if you have like a translucent uh, container, uh, if you have like a glass vessel, you can see uh, if roots are growing or not. Um, I don't like water that much because uh, plants are more, or cuttings are more prone to root rot uh, when you put them into the water. Um, based on my personal uh, experience at least. Let's talk about growth. Monstera carcinianum is a really fast growing plant. It's great to see a couple of new leaves like uh, popping up every uh, week uh, or so. No, not really. Every two to three weeks like you see regularly new leaves uh, appearing. It grows really fast uh, if conditions are right. So it's a lot of fun to watch uh, this plant. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people um, growing um, Monstera Peru, but also it's not sold that often, but it's a fantastic plant and you should definitely get a hold of one if you don't uh, own one uh, already. So yeah, fast growing plant, um, provide a moss pole and it's really going to climb um, upwards really, really quickly. Potting. Yeah, Monstera carcinianum is an aeroid uh, plant. It doesn't set so many roots into the soil. Uh, it doesn't need so much um, soil as a matter of fact and therefore you also don't need to repot it uh, so much every year or two is uh, absolutely sufficient. I rarely repot uh, my Carstenianum because um, I focus on growing it upwards and I make sure it can set its air roots into a moss pole and also this will support and add nutrients to the plant so it doesn't solely rely on the potting soil that is underneath. Fertilizer. Monstera carstenianum needs to be fertilized about every uh, two weeks or so in spring and summer and um, you can fertilize it once a month in autumn and winter. There's like a big variance in um, how often people fertilize plants. Like you can also almost never fertilize um, your plant. It will then just use the nutrients that are available in the um, potting medium you have it in and it will grow um, slower and slower but I prefer the best possible growth. That's why I um, usually um, use either liquid fertilizer, um, then you have to apply it like every couple of weeks, or you can use slow release fertilizer. You put it into the potting soil, you mix it, and then you um, fertilize about every half a year, and your plant is constantly getting fertilizer from the slow uh, release fertilizer. Big disadvantage of using uh, this kind of fertilizer is that uh, you can't really control how much fertilizer your plant is getting. That's why I really like liquid fertilizer where you can um, measure yourself how much fertilizer your plant is getting. An important point if you're using liquid fertilizer is that um, water your plant first and then add fertilizer and then water it again so uh, the fertilizer can wash away and it's not concentrating in one specific area because uh, what you want to do is you want to avoid root burn that can occur if you um, over fertilize and also if you're not sure how much fertilizer you, um, you are using or you should be using uh, use about one um, half or like one third of the uh, recommended strength uh, on your fertilizer that you are using. Yeah, then uh, let's uh, move on to pests. Pests, as always, is a really uh, pesky topic. I'm constantly fighting all kinds of plant pests at home uh, with my indoor um, plants. Um, I already lost a Monstera carstenianum once to pests and it was um, due to um, trips. Yeah, it was uh, really, really bad. The um, leaves uh, got brown and crinkly and uh, almost black. And I thought, what's going on? Like it was losing leaves uh, quickly. And only later I realized that I had um, trips on the plant. So if you um, have a trip infestation, uh, you have to really act quickly and they're very hard to see 
make sure um, you spray them, the plants either with neem oil or you make a mix uh, yourself with um, dishwasher soap and uh, rubbing alcohol mixed with water, just a few drops of each uh, is sufficient and you um, spray the leaves and also the stems and also the soil like every couple of days to hopefully get rid of them. I'm also a big uh, fan of uh, beneficial nematodes, so I look up uh, on Google which are the best beneficial uh, nematodes against a certain type of uh, pest and this works really great but you have to repeat uh, that like every couple of months to make sure um, there are no uh, plant pests and the best is if you use um, these kind of methods as preventative methods and not only uh, once you spot the um, houseplant pests because then they are really um, difficult to get rid of. Another pest I often see unfortunately on mon my Monstera carstenianum are mealybugs. These are these uh, white uh, little things, they almost look like uh, cotton balls and um, yeah, they're quite easy to get rid of in the beginning. Um, so if you spot one, you can just, just squish them. You take a cotton uh, swab with uh, rubbing alcohol and you just put it on um, the pests and they are uh, going uh, away, basically. But once um, they are plentiful and there's a lot of mealy bugs, they're hard to get rid of because they constantly get hold of uh, other leaves and start popping up again. So mealy bugs and um, thrips are certainly plant pests I um, saw on my Monstera carstenianum. So watch out for these and make sure your uh, plant is not getting infested. Yeah, that um, was it about Monstera carstenianum uh, care. If you like these videos, please uh, like um, this video, subscribe to our channel and follow along uh, my and our plant care journey here at Plantophiles. Thank you so much for your support and stay tuned for many more care and plant and gardening related videos from our side. Thank you so much for watching and see you again soon. Peace.